Hello guys, uh, welcome all of you to today's farmcast uh, and that is weekly farmcast. And uh, guys, today I'll talk about uh, nephrotoxic drugs to begin with. And then I'll uh, cover some of the doubts that you guys have asked, right? So it's already month of November, guys. Winter is setting in and Diwali is also knocking on the doors. So festivities all around, but uh, you guys don't have time for that. I understand. And so just uh, count it uh, like the last Diwali that you have to miss, right? So from next year on onwards, you can go full throttle. And for that, guys, you have to work your asses out for the remaining uh, one and a half to two months. By this time, you should be having a feeling, right? That uh, why a day has only 24 hours, why not 40, 48 hours? So if you're getting such kind of feeling in these last months, right? Believe me, you are on the right track, right? It gives a feeling, this competitiveness, and the large amount of course that you have to cover, it gives you such a feeling. Now let's uh, come down to the nephrotoxic drugs, guys, uh, which I have. See, these nephrotoxic drugs, usually in lectures I discuss. I would, um, they are scattered throughout the lecture in different topics. What I've done today is uh, I have squeezed them into, you know, some 14 to 15 drugs, which are the most important, which could be asked in our exams. Right, guys, so begin with the first one, lithium. So lithium guys can cause nephrotoxicity, it can cause inter interstitial nephritis, but the more important one is lithium can block vasopressin 2 receptors and because of which it can cause diabetes insipidus and thirst. Right, so lithium induced diabetes insipidus, um, commonly what they ask you is what is the drug of choice? Your drug of choice is amyloride, right, and alternative that can be used are thiazides, right. Um, cephalosporins, guys, usually beta lactams like your penicillins and cephalosporins, they can cause interstitial nephritis, but that would not be asked as such. But one drug that can cause uh, severe nephrotoxicity and can even cause renal failure, that is a cephalosporin called as cephaloridin. Cephaloridin is a very potent nephrotoxic drug. So this is one beta lactam drug, right, uh, in antibiotics that you have to remember is a very potent nephrotoxic drug. Now then moving on to tetracyclines. So all of you know guys, tetracyclines are very potent nephrotoxic drug. Um, here what they love to ask is which tetracyclines are exceptions, means which one do not cause nephrotoxicity. And these are three of them which I tell you in my lectures that you can remember as TDM, right? TDM, therapeutic drug monitoring, TDM, tegacycline, doxycycline, minocycline. Doxy has been asked a couple of times in your exam. So which tetracycline does not cause nephrotoxicity? The next one, guys, uh, all of you know that aminoglycosides, right? Aminoglycosides, they can cause nephrotoxicity. And remember, the drug that causes maximum nephrotoxicity is neomycin. And neomycin, in fact, is a drug that causes maximum of all of the toxicities, autotoxicity, nephrotoxicity, neuromuscular toxicity. And that is the reason why um, neomycin is not used by systemic root, right? And uh, the minoglycoside that causes least nephrotoxicity is streptomycin. Number five, guys, sulfonamides. See, sulfonamides, how they cause nephrotoxicity, they can cause crystalluria. And these crystals, they can get deposited in the renal tubules. And sometimes that can lead to obstructive renal failure can be seen. For any drug that causes crystalluria can cause obstructive renal failure. So sulfonamides are one of them. Next drug is uh, an antifungal, guys, amphotericin B. Amphotericin B is a of a nephrotoxic drug and to decrease nephrotoxicity what we have done is we preload the patient with 1 to 2 liters of normal saline so that would cause diuresis and remove amphotericin B faster. Second what we have done is we have designed liposomal amphotericin B. So liposomes are used to cover up amphotericin B to have lesser effect on the renal tubules. Next one guys these are antivirals like acyclovir, gencyclovir as well as foscarnate. Now these three drugs, you know, all of these are drugs against uh, the herpes virus, right? So acyclovir, gencyclovir, foscarnate, all of these drugs can crystal urea, just like sulfonamides and can cause obstructive renal failure can be seen. Tenofovir, guys, tenofovir is a very potent nephrotoxic drug and that is why it is contraindicated in renal failure. And uh, it can cause direct nephrotoxicity. That means it causes damage to the renal tubular cells. Whereas an, another anti-HIV drug, endinavir, it causes nephrotoxicity indirectly. So what endinavir causes, crystalluria, 
and because of which it can cause obstructive renal failure or these crystals they can get deposited and cause renal stones so endenavir causing renal stones it has been asked many times in our exams right rifampicin guys it causes interstitial nephritis can be seen but it is not usually asked in our exams um and ansaids ansaids are you know all of you know guys long term use of ansaids can cause nephrotoxicity and uh, they do ask you what is the histopathological uh, you know finding that is seen renal papillary necrosis is seen with long term ansaid use next one guys these are immunomodulators two immunomodulators which separate themselves from others is because of significant organ toxicity and these are as all of you might might have guessed these are tacrolimus more than cyclosporin so both tacro and cyclosporin they are hepatotoxic they are nephrotoxic they are neurotoxic so all kind of toxicity would be seen right so nephrotoxicity is what they usually ask right which immunosuppressant is nephrotoxic next one is an anti cancer drug cisplatin guys cisplatin can cause direct damage uh, to the renal tubular cells and to prevent cisplatin induced nephrotoxicity what we do they ask you number 1 we preload the patients with 1 to 2 liters of normal saline that causes chloride diuresis why am i stressing on chloride here because chloride binds to cisplatin and inactivates cisplatin right so once i do that i also give the patient um an osmotic diuretic that is mannitol so mannitol what it causes it causes forced diuresis and removes inactivated cisplatin so two points which are asked what is done chloride diuresis for which normal saline is used number two which diuretic is used mannitol right next next one is also an anti cancer drug guys methotrexate but it causes indirect toxicity because uh, it causes crystal urea so again crystals can get deposited and those crystals can cause obstructive renal failure nephrotoxicity can be seen with methotrexate ppi is proton pump inhibitors on long term use they are also nephrotoxic they can cause interstitial nephritis and statins and raltegravel now these drugs nephrotoxicity is not direct it is indirect because you know statins raltegravel these drugs they can cause myopathy and because of which there can be rhabdomyolysis right rhabdomyolysis you can you know it can choke the kidney and can cause acute renal failure so statins and raltegravel indirectly by rhabdomyolysis so guys this is what i had to talk about um nephrotoxicity of drugs and you know nephrotoxicity 99.9% of times if a question is asked it would be from these 16 classes of drugs which i have discussed now guys i'll move on to the questions that you guys have asked um so uh, the first doubt has been asked by a student called as vc vc is asking sir i'm not able to remember things much i tried to follow what you told about the 30 minutes of previous day topic and 10 minutes of today's topic i'm not able to do that within 30 minutes or 10 minutes because i'm not able to understand how to squeeze the content and feel satisfied about the content i have revised i'm not i'm very slow reader basically so i have disadvantage in gts at, and i tend to leave 30 to 40 questions right when i try to revise previous day subjects in the morning uh, we see that this is the first mistake you are doing i have not uh, asked you to re uh, revise the previous day subject in the morning in the morning when you are fresh go for revision of your uh, new new topics right you need to revise whereas towards the end of the day when you are tired then you go for something that you have studied yesterday right so something you have revised yesterday right and how are you not able to complete it today i am not able to understand that means you are you are not revising it properly guys if if i have revised something properly today right tomorrow just one day after today if i look at it i mean i should not take much time that means my revision is not adequate you are not adequately revising it or you might not have studied it well in the first go itself so you need to evaluate vc that i mean how can you not revise in the next day because see today if if you would have said to me that sir i'm not able to revise uh, after one month there's something i can understand but i revise today and tomorrow i look at it i mean how how, how can you not revise i mean this something surprising we see you have to buckle up and we see i suggest what you need to do is see the time is very less now right the and there is not much time to change your a uh, way of study or anything now because this this last times uh, last months you need to stick to your timetable and you i i guess you make a rigorous timetable and try to stick to the timetable every day and try to 
take out maximum output from yourself. See, do not look at others. We all are different in our abilities, right? You might not be able to replicate which what someone else is doing. So I have given you 30 minutes. So even 30 minutes is based upon what I was able to do. I was able to revise in 20 minutes and 10 minutes what I revised yesterday, day before yesterday. So it is not. it does not mean that you have to do it exactly in 30 minutes. You might take 40 minutes, 50 minutes, 60 minutes. So it differs from all of us. So guys, I can guide you. I can show you a path, right? And you do not have to exactly do whatever I say. I mean, you, you just take inspiration from that and draw or chalk a plan for yourself. Right, we see and uh, see the, uh, um, the problem they are telling me that in grand test, you are not able to fare well because you are leaving 30 to 40 questions. This is the reason why precisely guys, I had been telling you guys to give grand test as many as possible, as soon as possible. And uh, to start giving grand test you know, in the early days of your preparation, because this is what exactly you need to do. You need to work on yourself because giving grand test is also an art. How to solve a lot of questions in a limited period of time. It is an art, guys. For that to develop, you need to give a lot of grand tests, right? So I guess you started giving grand tests late, I think, VC, and that is why you are stuck now. So, but it does not matter. Whatever has happened has happened. Now, whatever you have in hands, grab that and move ahead. All right, guys, uh, next doubt has been asked by uh, Sunaina Sheikh. So please discuss some important doses asked in one of your farmcasts. Sunaina, please don't chase doses. Doses are rarely asked, right? So the chance of being asking a dose is 0.1%. So why would I waste my time in some uh, something such rare, right? And doses, why they do not ask you doses because they know is when you go to a particular field, a specialty, you just need to remember doses of a particular number of drugs. So if, if you're a cardiologist, why do you need to remember the, dose, the doses of a drug from neurology, right? So that is the reason why, I mean, it is more practical if you look at it, right? So they won't ask much doses. Oh, yeah, I guess next doubt has been asked by Ashwini Soman is asking, sir, the exact INI CT pattern is actually not clear. But uh, sir, can you please give us some rough idea on the marking scheme which will be followed? Guys, nobody knows anything about INICT, right? What was going to happen? But I guess the same thing would continue that, uh, uh, you know, get, we, you get a full mark for a right answer and uh, one third negative for a wrong answer. I think that there is the same thing. They will continue. There won't be much change. And I don't think you guys have to sweat out yourself over marking and all. Forget about all these things. These are all nonsense. Right, you just focus on whatever you are studying as of now. So whatever may be the pattern guys, whatever may, may be the marking uh, scheme, you don't need to worry. So you, what you need to focus now is focus on your revision guys. Focus on that, forget about everything else. So whenever the date comes, just go and give the exam. So if you have studied well, if you have studied honestly, right, whatever may be the pattern, whatever may be the marking scheme, Right, it is not going to make much change in your performance if you have studied well. So believe in yourself guys and go ahead. So that's all for today's farmcast guys. If you have any such kind of queries related to your preparation, please do let me know in the comment box. Right, I'll be more than happy to cover it in the upcoming farmcast. So that's all guys. Take care. Bye bye. And uh, I wish all of you an upcoming happy Diwali and uh, may God give you all your happiness and may God give you in these times enough strength to deal with this stress.